I think it was a shock in terms of the inflection point of the adoption of AI, the public moment mm -hmm. of AI, that suddenly the whole world uh, woke up to this incredible technology. And as someone who has been in the, in the field of AI for so long, it almost feels private to me that I just love this field. I love the science of AI because it's fun and curious and whimsical. And suddenly it became such a public technology. And it was, uh, that was a difference. And the one last thing I would say is shocking, but inevitable, was the, the global government's awareness of this technology. Suddenly, from Washington DC to Brussels to Singapore, every government was starting to talk about AI and really putting together AI strategies and all that. I read your op-ed last month in the Financial Times on now more than ever AI needs a governance framework. And you have advocated a very different approach to AI governance and policy making. I predicted one thing and didn't predict another thing. I predicted that this technology will continue to take off. It's a civilizational technology. It will transform our society and, and our lives. But I did, didn't predict the magnitude of the polarization of the two extreme views that we would face today in 2025. On one hand, there's the total tech utopia. You know, it comes from Silicon Valley, comes from many, uh, many places where tech is only good. It can only do good. If we push all the way to the extreme, AI will bring infinite productivity, infinite happiness, and you just name it. And on the other hand is total dystopia. Uh, and it's the dystopia of human extinction. So I propose three um, key elements of this policy framework. The first one is science and not science fiction. And as scientists, I'm yeah. sure you would appreciate that, yeah. right? Um, AI is gonna change so many things from an AI governance point of view. We need to measure the progress or measure the impact with scientific methods instead of hyperbolic claims of total utopia or total dystopia. And we have done this over and over again. We have done this in the in industry revolution. We have done this when cars come around. We are doing this for biotech and we need to do this for AI. It's the scientific approach in, in understanding the impact. The second one is pragmatism instead of ideology. This is a very boring one, but I think it's very important because AI fundamentally will bring a lot of positive changes, whether it's helping us to uh, um, find solutions to rare diseases, or helping with environmental solutions, or, or changing the way education or aging is, uh, 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 is happening. One historical example is cars, right? When cars came around, it actually wasn't very safe, but the pragmatic solution is not to tell Ford to shut down the factory, is to regulate with ideas like speed limit and seat belts. And that's how we should be approaching AI. Last but not the least, and this is where as a US scholar, I'm actually, uh, I think Singapore is doing a great job, is really um, juvenile the ecosystem. The ecosystem of any innovation, of any society, is a result of multiple players. And then there is the government that helps to inject um, uh, resources, especially into the innovation engine, the upstream engine of the uh, public sector so that talents and ideas can be produced to drive the whole ecosystem. But you are not just a professor. Now you are trying to bring this vision to real life by being an entrepreneur and you set up World Labs. And how does World Labs uh, fit into this picture of bringing these 
you know, big vision into reality. I feel this moment is so ripe to to build a team of the most incredible spatial intelligence talent. Many of them are my former students or former students, former students, or, or my friends' students. And this team, group of really young technologists. And to really focus and give it a try, let's try to make 3D foundation model happen. It's, it's way harder, in my opinion, than even language models, because it's, it's solving on a very hard problem that lacks data that is mathematically ill posed because most of the data in the world is uh, 2D and, and to recover the 3D foundation model or imagine the 3D foundation is, model is really hard. And, uh, and also to put that technology in the hands of people, uh, not just into uh, papers. So right now, World Lab is a team of 20-ish uh, uh, engineers and, and research scientists. They're really, I'm by far the oldest person in that, in that company. It's a really young, incredibly young, ambitious, and talented um, uh, pixel AI researchers and engineers. I have always said this to young women, young men, and young uh, students around the world, is truly follow your passion. Chase your curiosity, chase your passion, find your own North Star, and never give up. But I did not eat spicy when I was a kid. <laughs> um, so, uh, actually, great question. Uh, this is a perfect industry where a lot of things that's happening is not language-based, right? Uh, the making of food, the, the preparation of food, the, the, the design of plates, the process of serving, the, the cleaning, and, and then this whole supply chain, a lot of this has nothing to do with language. Spatial intelligence, uh, my impact or industry, I don't know, imagination is infinite. I guess I can think of um, robotics being helpful. We already see robots being used in restaurants, and I think robots will continue to, uh, to play a huge role in, uh, in the hospitality and service industry, including restaurants.